welcome to another episode of Inside the Recording Studio. I am Jody Whitesides, and with me as always is Mr. Chris Elstrom. How are you today, Chris? I'm doing all right, Jody. I am a little bit jet lagged here, but I shall rise above and try not to fall asleep at the wheel here. So, yeah, don't be good. flying the plane doing? when you're sleeping at the wheel. Yes. How are you doing? I'm a little tired and sweaty at the moment. I just got back from playing some high-level pickleball with some four fives and five O's. So you got your ass kicked? Is that what you're kind of saying? No, no, I didn't get my ass kicked. I I did some ass kicking and got a little bit of ass kicking. So it was like an even match. It was pretty good. Oh, so it's, so it's a good day. Good yes. day of pickleball. Yeah, I'm just what? I'm ready to talk about music stuff though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Let's that. Get on it. <clears throat> yeah, we have another uh, listener request today, actually. We do. It's for the Bricasti reverb unit. <laughs> yes, the M7. Obviously, what, what can you say about Bricasti that we haven't said in the next half hour coming up? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't, um, we haven't really mentioned the Bricasti a whole lot on the podcast, but that doesn't mean that we don't true. like it. Yeah, this was requested. My first thought was on this. It's kind of like how we talked about the Distressor mm. a few episodes ago, where mm -hmm. it's kind of like a modern classic. Yes. And I would kind of put the Bricasti in that category for reverb units. Yeah. Because this came out in 2007. That's a shocking year, isn't it? It's a shocking year, but it's a pretty shocking year to come out with a new rack-mountable digital reverb. Right, you know? right in the grand scheme of like everybody going digital with plugins. Right, <laughs> right. But everybody that's adopted it or indeed heard it really love it. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and dive into the pool of more reverb. So let's start with a brief history of this unit. Bricasti was formed by two gentlemen called Brian Zollner and Casey Dowdell. Now, if you take those names, Brian Bry and Casey, you get Bry, Cass, and then they add the T. So here's the name, Bricasti. That's where the name comes from. Both of these gentlemen came from Lexicon. So how did we'll they not get sued? <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, how much proprietary technology can there be when it comes to this? But we'll notice that there are a lot of similarities. Or some similarities, yeah. With like 480 or the 224 that we've talked about before. So, oh, uh, yeah. But the Bricasti is a one rack unit reverb. The model that we're talking about is the M7. And these are obviously around and you can buy them today. They're about 4,500 bucks. Coming out in, well, it's less than 20 years ago with rack mountable reverb for over four thousand dollars that's pretty ballsy so you better goods <laughs> if you want to sell any of these right yeah, maybe when they walk around you hear a little clang clang going on quite possibly yeah but there are a couple of variations of this if you will there is one called the m7m is the same unit like i said it just doesn't have any controls on the front it's just a rack mountable unit so then you go okay well what's the use with that well there isn't much unless you have the m10 which is the remote control now hmm where have you heard that before right there's a remote control that controls the unit lexicon 224 480 there you go perhaps but there is that so those are usually purchased in combination right the the remote and the rack mountable unit mm -hmm. you can get both of those are about six grand. You know, if you just want the remote, that's about 2,600. But you wouldn't obviously buy the remote if you don't have either one of these units. Why but not? You could just set it on your fake console that sits on your fake desk and you can fake people out while you're still doing everything in the box. Touche. The box <laughs> pays for itself, that's right? right. <laughs> yeah. Of course I have so, a Bricasti. Can't you see that remote control sitting over there? Right, yeah, it controls the plug-in interface that I have. In all seriousness, that's the unit. So any version of that that you have, it consists of, it has six dual processors inside of it that does all the processing. And it can um, go really high on its audio quality in digital format because it's like 192K with yeah. 24 bits of depth and resolution there, mister. Indeed. Frequency range from 10 hertz up to 20K. That's all we hear anyway, if we're lucky <laughs> if under we the best of circumstances. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, high quality unit. It can run in stereo, 
or as in just stereo analog to in and out, or it can do digital AES, which is a single cable. Well, you know, real quick before you yeah. bolt on on this, maybe you should describe the AES cable because I'm not sure we've ever described what an AES cable is. All right. Well, tell us about the AES, Jody. Well, you get a nice cable that looks like an XLR cable, but it's meant for AES connections. And bing, bing, you connect them in. It's digital XLR looking thing. Right. It does have some MIDI as well that I just briefly mentioned that it's primarily for patch switching, mm -hmm. right? That you could do that. That's a funny thing I want to get back to later when we talk about some people that actually use this, but I'll, I'll touch on that again. You can chain up to eight of these bad boys. That's to, a lot of reverb. That's a lot of reverb. Obviously, unlike plugins, right? If you're using it for single use, you can have up to eight as opposed to a plugin. You can have as many as you want, obviously. Right. But as um, many that's, as your computer can handle. Right. But eight is the limit for a remote control. So you can just kind of daisy chain these and control everything from your desk as it were. So you don't have to run back to your rack. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about the layout, Jody, if you would, of this unit. I mean, it's it's a reverb, right? So you kind of get... Well, it's a nice looking single rack unit space and it's got like some LED readouts and some knobbies type things. So you've got an input knob. So you can dial in the amount of gain going into the unit. You've got a display that gives you your LED readout with red text. Beep, yeah. beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. And then your navigation functionality comes from some up and down buttons and a scroll wheel in order to adjust any parameters once you get to your certain section you wish to mess around with. You've got six buttons specifically for editing. You've got four other buttons that give you a quick favorite patch recall. So you essentially have four favorites on the front end of this box. Then you also have a tap tempo button, which to me is like, where are you putting this in your rack unit that you can sit in front of your DAW and tap the tempo? <laughs> That's, I mean, well, I know they have desks where you have them kind of angled up at you and maybe you put it there, but it seems like if you're really going to have it with a, especially if you have a remote, and I'm assuming the remote actually has the tap function too. Yeah. Essentially, it's like you need to be near the unit if you're going to tap tempo the reverb. It's like, how far right. away are you sticking this thing? Well, either that or, you know, you yell at your assistant. Too, right? <laughs> and better so, hope they have good timing. Right. No, but I mean, but that that's pretty cool too. That That's obviously just set just like certain tempo specific functions or lengths of, of reverbs and things. So I think mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. The four buttons that you mentioned there for the quick patch recall, I think is also a nice feature, right? Because as we'll talk about the banks and stuff they have in this thing, instead of just constantly scrolling through or finding them, you can have them right there. And great for auditioning, right? If you're trying different reverbs on a vocal, for example, or whatever. Yep. Th there's some thought gone into the front panel of it, but there's no real mystery to it. And it's just it's a reverb box and it sounds amazing. So it is just that. The back of it is nothing too fancy either. It's got the MIDI in and out. Got, like you mentioned, the AES, single cable IO, and connections for the remote and daisy chaining more than one unit, as well as just XLR in and out. Simple, straight ahead, clean kind of box. I actually was in, just mentioned some travels here, and I was in a studio where I did some work. And they had one sitting in the rack. So I'll put that up on, on our website or on social media so you can say, hey, look at that. There's a Brikasti. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. remember the first Brikasti I saw was at a studio for a mix engineer, mastering engineer guy by the name of John Rod, who's actually doing some pretty stellar work right now with Jordan Peele because he did the mixes for Jordan's last three movies. I oh, believe. cool. Yeah. No, his, uh, but that's the first time I saw a Brickcast. He was in John's studio. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first time I saw one was uh, actually on, I think it was Dave Pensado talking about it. Like, he had one on his desk and, you know, he's one of the users, but it's like, ooh, Brickcast, what's this? First time I saw it live in person. Right. It was like right. 2010. I mean, it had already been out for a couple of years, but I'd never seen one. I'd only heard about him. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. jump right on one of those. Right. It's a pretty hefty investment. <laughs> it's not like you're buying a 480 where you, you'd spend a little bit more. I'm sure there will be people that argue that this is 
if not on par, perhaps exceeding a 480, you know? Well, there's probably people that have their favorite reverb and that favorite reverb is going to be Bricasti and other yeah. people that are going to say some other brand, but for now it's Bricasti. Right. There you go. The unit itself is, it's an algorithmic reverb, right? Yeah. It's, so you can't fit a single rack space and get the entire Sydney Orchestra Hall in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or a plate, right? Yeah. But what it does have, it's just the usual banks, right? It has bank for ambience, which if one doesn't really know what that is, what the difference is, ambience is more, you're placing the source in a specific place, but you're not really thinking of a reverb. It just kind of gives like a little bit of space around. Kind of like it's a slap, like, but not really a slap. Yeah, without the, I would say the way I would think about it is like without the sort of pre-delay there, mm -hmm. you know, it's just kind of, oh, you just, you get a little bit of, of a vibe around the source, which can be really effective, actually. I think we mentioned that when we we're talking about actually using reverb in the past episode. Mm -hmm. And then it has a bank for spaces. Now, spaces are- Big areas. You know, just a couple, yeah, exactly. It's got arenas and caverns, churches, that type of thing, like scoring stages, that type of thing. A little bit more of- an actual place. You're not just recreating a nice sounding. Well, algorithms are like, actual places. Right. Almost like it was an IR, but not exactly. But in digital, all well, IRs are digital form. But, <laughs> nice but, try uh, there. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was trying to, but uh, I'll blame the jet lag. Yep. Uh, there we go. go but uh, also chambers, plates, each category has a boatload of presets. So mm -hmm. even if you're not one of those guys to dial up your own, that's uh a lot to get tweaking in there. And with that tweaking ability, we're going to take a moment for a word from our sponsors. And we're back. And now we're going to dive into the tweak ability by way of the controls. Kick us off. Well, I, I keep saying this phrase, it's a reverb unit. So you're going to have the usual suspects, right? You're going to have your pre-delay, the time, the size, the diffusion, all, all that type of stuff, right? But one thing that I thought was really cool about this is we mentioned when we talked about the 480 that there was like a crossover that you could set frequency-wise and then how you could have different reverb tails mm -hmm. on those different frequencies. The Brickcast does the same thing, except it's actually three. So you have two crossover points. Mm. You have for the low frequency and the high frequency, and there's a lot of overlap there. But that leaves you obviously with three different times, one for the low frequency, the mid, and then the high frequency. Right. And the low frequency can go from 80 hertz all the way up to 4.8K. That's a pretty big range. And that's a pretty big range. And speaking about big ranges, mm -hmm. the high frequency goes from like 200 all the way up to 16K. That's just an insane range. <laughs> so, so in a, obviously, there's a lot of tweakability there, right? That's one of the things that, as far as like parameters to adjust, that I think sets it apart. Not just from the sheer quality from it, but just that you can get in on that level. Mm -hmm. So it also has like roll-offs where you can just essentially low-cut the output of the reverb. So Or high-pass for that matter. High-pass. I always like to say low-cut because I confuse myself more than I usually do <laughs> if I think of, of high pass. Same thing, obviously. So it's an amazing sounding unit. People that use this, they swear by it, right? Or they wouldn't use it, you know? Well, or they wouldn't shell out the bucks for it. I mean, it's a pretty pricey unit. Right. It is. Some of the users that are famous for using the Bricasti would be Dave Pensato. Who yeah. doesn't know that guy? Right. Al Schmidt, may he rest in peace. Right. Now and, the, you know, if, if Al Schmidt has one, <laughs> you know it's a good sounding unit. Exactly. I actually read a story about that when he was talking about it. He did a session somewhere and they had one. And he just bought one for his own use. It's like, no, I, I got to have one of these in my rack. Because, you know, he rolled his racks. Yeah, of course. In, I guess, he'd take his, his rack anywhere he needed to go. Yeah. Right. Here's somebody that I wanted to come back to, as I mentioned at the top. John Mayer, guitar player, John Mayer. What, what, what? <laughs> yeah. He has two in his rack. When he his goes guitar on rack is what his you're referring rack. to. Yes. So yeah. he's using the Bricasti for his reverbs on his live guitar sound. Which is just all sorts of awesome. I just think that's amazing. Yeah. The second one is, is presumably a backup. Oh, heck but, no. Maybe he's doing really some in-depth patch switching. 
It's one of those, and for my clean sound. <laughs> right. <laughs> Engineer Alan Mayerson deals with scores and things like that. He's, he's a big user. So the, John it's, Rod. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He mentioned him. He's in there. Right. So anywhere that you need high quality reverbs, chances are guys have this. And I think, like I said at the top, right, it's kind of like a modern classic because when we think of, or at least when I think of, you think about classic reverbs, you think about the lexicons, right? Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. And then when it comes to other hardware boxes, I don't know that there are any. Well, you really, know, that you actually, think about. I'll, I'll, I'll step in. And this is not to like detract from the Bricosti, but in terms of guitar effect reverbs, I would mm -hmm. go TC Electronics because they are very, very clean. With a lot of their this is effects, true. and yeah. especially with their reverbs, and it's a, kind of amazing that John Mayer would think, "Well, you know what? I'm going to go with the Bricosti over the TC Electronics," which is like, "Whoa, okay, you know, that's an interesting step. That's a huge step when you think about it." Yeah, when it comes to like, let's say, studio reverbs, it's Bricosti, and maybe it's just a sign of the times, or you you forget about a lot of classic units that may have been there, but I think just. It, it speaks with the quality of the unit, I think, when you can come out like in the 2000s with a hardware box while everything is going digital and it, it's a viable choice, right? That people actually buy this thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool one. I mean, there are software versions. Yes, there are. The Liquid Sonics have their seventh heaven. See what they did there? Seventh mm. heaven. Now they have their fusion irs that they do right so that their impulses from presumably from the Bricosti, this unit right yeah you still can tweak them right and get the results that you want that's kind of uh, impressive when you think about it because usually the ir is just really the ir yeah it is what it is and you can you know and then you can eq somewhat, and but, kind of tweak but then again right. altiverb kind of started the whole revolution on all that and they've gotten pretty involved with what you can do in their irs yeah and if you want to check out the, the Liquid Sonics thing, it's they have two versions. They have their, their full pro version, which is about three hundred bucks, two ninety nine, and then they have a scaled down one. You know, you, that, do you know much about that? Because I don't know much about the Liquid Sonics, and I know yeah. you've spoken about it before. So when you spend your two ninety nine, three hundred bucks to get the Bricosti yeah. Seventh Heaven recreation, so to speak, are you getting like all the reverbs from the actual unit or is it just a portion of it? Because if that is the case, that's a screaming deal. I believe that's it. That's all of it. Wow. Yeah. That's also one. I mean, because Liquid Sonics, they make the Verb Suite Classics. That's right. part of the Slate Bundle. And that's the my go-to reverb at this point. Is the Verb Suite? Uh, yeah. Mm. And it has the Brickhouses in there as well. And I'm not sure if it's every single preset that's from the original Brickhouse but there's a lot of them there. There's a lot of them in, in each category. So it's, you know, a lot of functionality in there and it just, it, it's, yeah, it's a great sounding reverb. But the cool thing also then, like you mentioned, it's like, it's not just a static IR, if you will. It's like you can change the lengths and things, which you can with some IRs as well, but that it stays sort of true to form and you don't get mm -hmm. zipper noises and that kind of thing. Right. So it's it's pretty cool. But Liquid Sonics, to go back to that, they have a scaled down version as well, which has a little bit of, of less tweakability, I guess, but you can get the same type of thing for like 69 bucks. Yeehaw. Yeah. That sounds like a good deal. And yeah. then if you really want to be a not nice person, you can find IRs that you could load into your favorite IR loader because I've heard of people doing that. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, you know, a quick Google search will just give you, it has, I used to have them for, uh, and it was sort of like an official thing. It was, it was some company that just had done it and they just gave the IRs away. Hmm. It wasn't like somebody had just sneakily done this from what I understand. Okay. They just did it and I had it for um, Space Designer and Logic. Yeah, uh, presets for all that kind of stuff as well. But so there are those out there if you just want to listen to it, if you go on reverb hunting. So lots and lots of options for you there, even though that not many people might do like a one-on-one -on -one recreation of it in software sure. form. Yeah. The closest one you're going to get is probably the seventh heaven, you know. So go buy so, it if you really need it. Yeah. And you and can't now, afford the full box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe try the IRs first before you buy the, the hardware unit. Or if you have the funds for that, 
by all means, go buy the hardware unit because you, you're probably not going to be disappointed. So you mentioned that you've had these IRs, which means yeah. you've kind of used it. So where would you use these? Quick answer, anywhere that you need reverb. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I mean, it's great. I mentioned in the past where I'm not one of those that when I'm going looking for a, a reverb in a mix that I go, okay, let's shoot for the 480 or the Brickhouse D. I, I simply choose a reverb that's just going to work. And whether that is a 480 or a Brickhouse D or whatever, it's less important to me. Mm -hmm. But it has gotten a lot of use. A lot of times I, I those are my kind of go-to first. And you can usually find something pretty quickly and then tweak from there, right? Yep. So I use it, yeah, anywhere. Vocals, used it on drums, on pretty much anything, you know. But it really sounds great on whatever you want to throw it on. Yeah, I've, everything I've ever heard it used for is just like, ah, oh, it makes me want one. But then I've tied myself in pretty good to the lexicon side, so. Yeah. So, but that's why but, I'm thinking, well, maybe Liquid Sonics, that might make some sense right there. Yeah, you should check it out. I mean, it's, I like their stuff. They have other ones as well that's not on topic for this, but they have one that's called Lustrous Plates, mm. which is another reverb I have that's from Liquid Sonics, but it's also part of the Slate Bundle type of vibe where it's all these different slates and they, or, or all these different slates, all these different plates, Freudian slip there. Yeah, they do reverbs really, really well. And, you know, part of it is obviously on the shoulders of the Brickasti. So. so there you have it. That is a yeah. little history of the Brickasti, the fact that it sounds really damn good and it's only a single rack unit. unit. And you can make it look really cool on a desk by spending a little extra and getting the remote control. Yeah. And then of course, you know, like you mentioned your buddy there where people are doing it in uh, or mixing scores and things in surround or even out most uh -huh. now, right? It isn't capable of doing surround. So you would actually no, you'd need have to multiple units. Yeah, you need yeah, exactly. And I've seen people have their racks it's like seven of them. It's like you can, you can actually daisy chain up to eight of them. Right. Which is like, hmm, what is that? Eight times four and a half. That's it, it's expensive is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Damn right. There you go. All right. Yeah. And with that, we'll move on to our Friday finds. Chris, what have you got this week? I realized that Spitfire Audio, the high-end sort of sample instrument makers, have come out with another part of their originals series, which is their cheap instruments, basically, like 30 bucks, I think. They came out with Epic Choir, hmm. and that was something that, yeah, a lot of people have been screaming for. That, <laughs> no pun intended. Actually, I, I walked right into that one. Yeah, it came out, and it sounds great. So if you're looking to add some, like, choirs for your scores or your soundtracks or even just your music, check them out because it could be a very, very cost-effective option, and they all sound great because, you know, they're from Spitfire. So there you go. What about you? What do you got? I'm looking at something from a company called Have Audio. I know them. Yep. Do you know? Yeah. They have recently released something called the UAP for short. It is the Unique Audio Plugin. And this particular plugin sounds like the kitchen sink to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it features playable leads, atmospheric sounds, drones, soundscapes, hits, risers, whooshes, brums, wavetables, rhythmic loops, and lots of other weird textures and effects. And it's built and made for playing with contact. So you must have contact player in order to use this. And right now they're doing an introductory offer for 99 euro up until I believe about August 15th. So of 2022, obviously, if you listen to this way past that date, the price is going to go up and you'll spend more. But the interface looks pretty interesting and just the sheer multitude of sounds that it appears to be getting out of it just with the simple plugin is pretty insane. And my understanding is they are going to expand upon this in the future with expansion packs. Unique audio nice. plugin. Sounds to, pretty uh, comprehensive there. Yes, for all your comprehensive needs. 
While we've got your attention, we ask that you go to InsideTheRecordingStudio.com and sign up for our mailing list. Doing so will get you weekly reminders about the Tuesday tips when they come out, and we'll make sure that you don't miss any future episodes of this lovely podcast. Send us an email at goldstar, G-O-L-D-S-T-A-R, at Inside the Recording Studio with the word Bricasti, B-R-I-C-A-S-T-I is the way it's spelled, and you'll get something cool back in your inbox. If you have a topic or suggestion for Chris and I to explain in a future episode, just like today's episode, ha, 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 contact us at the contact page and we'll put it into consideration for a future episode. And with that, I'll say, see you next week. Thanks for listening, people. I'll talk to you later, Jody. Jody.